What do you do if you have a coffee machine that you want to turn on in the morning, but there's no way of doing it automatically? It doesn't even turn on by itself when you turn on the power, so you could, say, use a smart switch. Well, what do you do? You make a tiny robot arm. This is a little project I call the Coffee Finger, and it's designed for my partner who, in the mornings, wants his espresso, and wants his espresso machine heated up for a good 10 minutes beforehand so it makes good espresso, but doesn't want to get up 10 minutes earlier to do it. And so this little contraption is in charge of pressing that button for him. So how did I build it? Well, it's made of a couple of pretty simple components. First of all, there is a microcontroller here. Uh, this is in fact a ESP32 packaged into a nice small form factor by M5 stack. This is one of their Atom Matrix little boxes. They're great, they're not particularly expensive, they're occasionally hard to get due to supply issues, but if you can grab some of these, they're absolutely fantastic, and they just have everything you need on board. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, you name it, it's got it. The second thing is this little blue servo here, and that is just one of the standard blue servos you can find at any decent electronics store or even online. So in my case, this was, I think was less than $10 at my local micro center. I'm lucky enough to have a micro center near me. It's one of those dying breed of shops that aren't always around. But if you haven't got one, you can find them online for an incredibly reasonable price. And with those two components, you've kind of got your basis of what the little robot's gonna do. After all, all it's doing is spinning this arm on a set timer. And servos, what they're good for is, putting things to a known angle. So this is mounted so that its zero degree angle is straight up. So when I ask it to move to, let's say 90 degrees, it will sit there and just move to exactly 90 degrees and then it's good and it's gonna press the button because it's mounted on the side of the machine. And so what powers all this? Well, it's not a lot of code, it turns out. There is a piece of software called ESP Home. It's fantastic. It makes writing home automation things very simple. You write a single configuration file, it compiles it over the air updates. It's just generally very fantastic. And then you write your file and then you upload it and it just runs. And it has plugins for all sorts of devices, servos included. And so I can make a fake switch that when I turn the switch on in my home automation system, what that turning on actually does is run the servo through a scripted sequence. It runs it to a neutral position, runs it round so it presses the button and then it backs it off to tuck it away behind the side of the machine. And a lot of the sort of housing and design of this is all pretty basic. Obviously I have my little microcontroller here at the front, and then what it's housed in is another little sort of casing that M5 Stack also make for this class of devices called a prototype kit. It's just a little circuit board and a little plastic housing that everything fits neatly into. So my controller is just basically put onto that and just mates in there really nicely. You slot it on like that. And then there's a servo, hot glued, just the top, hot glue in this case was strong enough. I think there might, might be a little of super glue in there as well, but it's really not particularly uh, under a lot of stress, let's say. And then I just wired the servo through, through on this little circuit board inside here to some of the output pins of the microcontroller. Pop into ESP Home, tell it what those pins are, tell it it's a servo, do a little extra scripting to sort of wire it all up. I'll link the actual script below. And bam, you've got a little device that when your home automation says, please turn on, it takes a little plastic finger, rotates it and presses the button. That plastic finger, by the way, just laser cut acrylic. And laser cut because I'm lazy, honestly. Uh, you can make it out of wood. You can make it out of sort of some old pieces of stuff you've glued together. The only real key thing is that the little hole that you mount it onto the server with has to have some little serrated edges so it grips the sort of servo output pinion. Otherwise it's gonna slip under the forces you have. But that's basically it. And so once you've done that, I mounted it onto the coffee machine, spent a little bit of time lining it up because of course it has to hit that power button right in the center. And much to my surprise, it totally worked. A couple of things had to be tweaked. Uh, I will say one of the things was that I had to adjust the speed at which the arm went. Initially I had it very slow, sort of coming in at a very slow rate. That wasn't very successful in pushing the button down. It turns out pushing the servo at maximum speed and getting that sort of momentum in there, that has a much better success rate of pushing the button down and getting the power turned on. So I turned the speed up to maximum and left it that way. Otherwise, it's most cases of like lining it up, making sure the dimensions are right, and there you go. And to mount to the side of the machine, 
there's just some magnets on the bottom. And the magnets basically give enough power to stick it on there. They're just super glued to the plastic case themselves. And then a little bit of rubber on top of those magnets just to provide a little extra traction so they don't slip on the stainless steel side of the coffee machine. Could I have used like a linear actuator or something else for this? Of course I could. I've got a whole bundle of them over there in a box somewhere. But the key other thing about this design is when you're not using it, once it's run, it kind of tucks itself away behind the machine to the side. And so it's not in the way of the button. I could have mounted a big old piston or actuator on the button itself, but then pressing the button as a person becomes more annoying. It's kind of clutter visually on the machine. It doesn't look good. And I think being small and unobtrusive is a good thing to aim for, for tiny home automation robots like this. So there you have it, a tiny robot to press an on button. It is absolutely over-engineered, but I love it. I love making tiny things that move. It's a wonderful physical manifestation of some of the things you can achieve, in this case, with a little bit of microcontrollers and programming. So if you have a button in your life that needs pressing occasionally, you could also look in something like this. It doesn't have to be rotational, could be any direction, but just know that like tying a servo up to be run at a certain time, it's really not that difficult. But with that, I'll leave you with ideas of buttons being pressed and tiny robots, and I will see you next time. Thank you.